Hello, and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I want to be howling free! And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Howling 3, The Marsupials, which came out in 1987. Written and directed by Filippi Mora. Why don't you give us the synopsis for Howling 3? I'll try. The story follows an Australian girl called Jaboa who has just escaped from her cult-like family. They are a group of marsupial werewolves that have been hiding out in the Australian outback and Jaboa has moved to the city and has found love. But some scientists have uncovered evidence and the army is getting involved and things are going to turn deadly. So this is apparently, according to the film, based on Gary Brander's Howling 3. No, it's not. No, <laughs> it really, no, really isn't. A wiki dash it. It's not. <laughs> well, I guess at least they brought in the same director from Howling 2 to direct Howling 3, because clearly the studio, you know, believed that he was the grandmaster to bring this series into the mainstream. Not Joe Dante. No. Oh, okay. No, because uh, Gary Brander doesn't like Joe Dante still. Does Gary Brandon like Philip Amore? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like the budget got dropped considerably in this one, as there are no, I would say, Hollywood stars in the film. No. Nope. Uh, this film is also considered an exploitation movie. Mm, yeah. Because it is that. set in Australia, and it has to be said that Australians would definitely recognise a whole host of the actors from this film. Yeah. They're kind of celebrities uh, in Australia. Yeah. Uh, other than that, this film didn't get a theatrical release in Australia. <laughs> but I think it might have released into a few theatres around the world, but mostly straight to DVD. Yeah. I have never seen this film until now. And... This was my first time sitting down and watching it. Uh, the Howling series of horror movies, as I said in the previous two reviews, are not my real go-to movies. And there's a reason why. Like, I've heard whispers in the classroom. I've seen writing on the wall saying, do not watch Howling 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you know. And I'm like, really? Why? Why is that? I remember when I got my first copy of this, I had a home projector. Oh my. <laughs> and I was just like, guys, I finally got Howling 3. We're going to watch a movie that's going to have transformation effects, gore, nudity going by the previous movies. Guys, get your beers, come round, get your munchies. We are going to watch Howling 3 on the projector. I must have been busy that night. <laughs> 40 minutes into the film, everyone asked me to put something else on. <laughs> yeah. And we did. Yeah. <laughs> the film starts... I like... I don't even... I, like, I, I was just going to say right now, Philip Mora's editing for this movie is so shit that the even the first 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes of this movie are either borderline hilarious... And a complete parody and just a massive huge comedy of everything that we see in the Howling series. Or it's whatever <laughs> this is going on. I, I do agree with you. I do agree with you. Because they cut to that footage right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. And it, and the camera lingers there way too long. When yeah. they keep prodding this wolf tied to a tree. Mm -hmm. And the... then it cuts to the professor. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's stick with it, Gary. It stays in Australia. You've got the footage and you're like, okay, what's going on? It's 1905 Australia. And then it cuts to Siberia. Yeah. And there's a guy who sees what appears to be a body on the floor and he runs up to a door and then he runs towards the camera and screams. And then it cuts to the professor <laughs> who is showing the same footage from 1905 Australia on a screen to some students. And yeah. I'm like... Why didn't you just start here? What? <laughs> Why did you need to show the footage to then show the footage? Because they also had to establish the reasons why. Because we also had that cut from Siberia to the American National Intelligence Agency where two agents, who I believe could possibly be, be the same guys doing Omega Team. I could be wrong, I don't know. But these two agents go, what's the code word in Russia for lycanthrope? Oh, it's got to be a code word for something. And, the, you know, and then we cut to the professor who's studying werewolves. And I'm like, okay, so the world knows or kind of... There's wolves out there. We've established Russia and, uh, uh, you know, and America know this. 
And the professor, Professor Harry Beckmeyer, played by Barry Otto, then goes to speak to the president. <laughs> yes! I wanted to ask you about the trout of Turan. Yes, Mr. President. Is it a goddamn Polaroid of Jesus Christ or what? No, not the President of the United States. No, no, no. Just the President. <laughs> and the President speaks to Dr. <laughs> Professor Harry and, you know, basically explains to him, like, yeah, you, you got some funding to go and investigate these werewolves that your grandfather was uh, recording back in 1905. And the professor looks at the camera and says, What's what? that doing there? Why are we being filmed, Mr. President? Ah, oh, don't let it bother you, Beckmeyer. We are recording everything here for future generations. Please go on. He turns to him and he says, Well, we need to record all this footage for future generations. And you're looking like... And the camera does a wide shot then, oh. and there's no cameraman there. Nobody. And I'm like, how far is this camera? Okay, okay, uh, uh, just turn that thing off, please. But then they don't even mention it again. They carry on talking about how, you know, Dr. Beck, uh, Professor Beckmeyer has to go to Australia. You know, he's, he's an Australian actor as well. Yeah. Uh, Barry Otto. Um, and, like, I did wiki him, and I looked at some of his stuff, and I'm like, they're, they're kind of parts in the background. You know, I, I got, nothing really jumped out to me other than Howling Free. You know, because then he goes to Australia and he's happy to be home and he's talking to uh, Ralph Cotterell, uh, playing Professor Sharp. And these two guys are wanting to investigate more into the mystery of the lycanthropes that are supposedly in Russia and uh, the Australian outback. And we're also getting those cuts to uh, Jaboa. Exactly, yeah, because when he gets there and he's talking with his, you know, this other guy, there's a film crew in front of them. And that is because Jaboa has run away from her pack of werewolves or marsupials mm -hmm. or what, whatever this pack of animal people are. Yeah. She's run away because this guy seems very rapey with her. Tylo, the leader of the marsupial pack. Because there doesn't seem to be many men, males here. It's no. just all women. <laughs> yeah. And he wants to have sex with her and obviously she doesn't want that so she kicks him in the balls and runs away we get a very bizarre sequence in the bus where she's explaining all of this to this very weird priest looking fella oh my god that was so awkward <laughs> that was more awkward than the president shit you know because my stepfather tried to rape me and he's a werewolf I'm only 10 minutes ago. And so she's walking around Sydney and uh, this guy spots her and she runs. She legs it. Oh, she tries to get away from him and he chases her down. Oh my chases God. her through the back alley. She, she gets cornered. He chases her halfway across fucking Australia. He does, yeah. You know. And then he's just like, hey, I'm working on a movie. You're the actress we've been looking for. Come in my car. We'll take you to the film set right now. Yeah. And we get introduced to the director who's like, yes, in this scene, you're going to get gang raped by four men. And then, then this will happen. She's yeah. like, what's a movie? Okay, let's do it. For example, in your first scene, you'll be gang raped by four monsters. <laughs> oh. I like a person with vivaciousness. And this director, I mean, is he, he's a parody of, like... Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> I mean, I, I recognise the actor uh, playing the director. He, he, he played the collector in um, Mad Max Beyond Thunder. That's the yeah. only other place I've seen him. And yeah, the whole situation with Donnie, played by Lee Biolus, you know, he just, he sees, you know, Jaboa and he's just like and completely infatuated with her and just throws her in front of this film set. And they're filming a werewolf movie, Shapeshifters Part 8, in the day, in the middle of a city. And they just, what, that, oh, God, that whole sequence where she's just getting strangled and screaming. Yeah. And you've got the director just going, cut, cut, <laughs> cut. cut. Well, we do eventually cut from there because he decides to take Jaboa to the cinema to see her first movie ever. Oh and they're God. watching the movie, It Came From Uranus, which just so happens to be 
oh, we're a wolf movie. And I'm guessing this is a, a callback or a dig at the original Howling movie because oh. of how long it lingers on the werewolf transformation. I thought it was also a, a dig at an American werewolf in London. True, yeah. Because yeah. it's a nurse, you know, and she's yeah. speaking to this guy and she's like, what's happened to you? And I'm like... And you, you you watch him change, well, the, but it's just the face the bubbling. The film has another dig, I guess, or another nod to Mac Wolf in London when it plays Bad Moon Rising, but it's a cover version in the background. And I was just like, that song is, you know, completely tied to werewolf movies, I guess. Well, yeah. It's fine. It's but, like, I don't know if it was the way this movie was making me feel, but that song really grated on me. I see. The whole time it like I love that song. I think it's fun. I've got it on multiple playlists. I'll fucking sing it whenever. But this version was just so slow. And with them in bed, these two, you know, Donny and Jaboa, you know, I'm just gonna call them Johnny, like Benny from fucking part two. You know, they're in bed and uh, fucking hell, it's like the director said, you gotta pretend to be you've just had sex, so you'll be sweaty. And because it's Australia, it's hot. So we're just going to cover you in water so you look like you're going to slip off the bed. <laughs> you know, and she's like, make love to me, Johnny. And he's like, oh, oh, I'm completely in love with you, even though I've just met you like yesterday, you know, and brought you to the cinema. And he, he uncovers what appears to be a scar on her belly. But we will come to know that that's her pouch. I'm confused. Yes. <laughs> but it's okay because three of the women from um, her pack have decided to come after her and they're dressed as nuns. And so we get this really weird sequence on a bus where one of the nuns scares the kid. And the the nuns then obviously spot uh, Donnie and Jaboa driving around in the car because they can pick up their scent. You know, they're that good. They can They can smell her scent. And we go to the after rap party for um, Shapeshifters Part 8. And uh, it's... Jaboa has uh, a bit of a, a panic attack because of all the strobe lightings at this party. Yeah. Which, as we now find out, can trigger a transformation. She has a quick make-out session. Oh, the awkward sex yeah, sequence. Oh, with Donnie. But that doesn't seem to work. And so she goes running out of the party and starts running through the streets of Australia. <laughs> she runs into an arcade and then runs right back out again. And she keeps on running until eventually she gets hit by a car off screen. Off screen. And so then when Donnie finally finds her, he's just like, oh, oh no. I love you. Don't die, Jaboa. So they take her to the hospital. Yeah. And and while this is happening, the three nuns have turned up at the turned up at the after party, and the director's like, "Darlings, you look wonderful. Come in." And they're dressed in the worst happy shopper werewolf masks, like you could have thrown together. Like these are the masks that you're going to use for a mid change, you know. But these are supposed to be the way that these girls look, and you you just like, oh my god. And they walk in, and I'm like, oh wait for the we're, wait for I, the carnage. Well, yeah, wait for the carnage. I, I, I'm not expecting a cut, but I'm expecting a scream and, and you know, war, roars and, oh my God, yeah, no, no, they all escape. The doors just fling open and everybody goes running out. Uh, oh. <laughs> Did they kill anybody? No, even the director <laughs> fucking survived and he was slow as fuck. <laughs> And so then they make their way to the hospital because I guess they find out where Jaboa is. Well, yeah, they can smell her, I suppose. And and the scientists, you know, Sharp and Beckmeyer, um, you know, they, they're like, lock the hospital down. This is exactly what we want. I mean, what did he say earlier? I can't believe some of the lines in this movie. They're fucking amazing. One of the signs that lines earlier was, you need a smoking gun in one sequence. Yeah. And then it, they're indoors. They're fucking indoors. And then it cuts to them outside in a park, and Beckmar goes, what I need is a werewolf with a smoking gun. What you need is a smoking gun. What I need is a werewolf holding a smoking gun. You're like, did they just stop talking there? <laughs> Walk all the way to the park and then continue the conversation? It's just like, I hate it when movies do that. I didn't even know movies could do 
that. I'm like... Well, most of the time it's seamless, but it happens all the time. Not like that. They were literally in a fucking bill. Like, I, I get it. Like, walking out the room and... Yeah. Yeah. But the, the, the two scientists have locked down the hospital and, and, and Donnie's been sent home by a nurse who looked like she was part werewolf, but she's not. And the three nuns walk into the hospital and kill everybody. And it's in this sequence as well that we start to find out that not only has Jaboa got this marsupial pouch, um, but she's also pregnant with Donnie's baby, I'm assuming. Oh, fuck me. I've just remembered shit. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm getting PTSD flashbacks with this fucking movie. Oh, my God. I've got to keep that in my what mind. What happened? Tell us. Sorry. Here. I said, I just, re I just remembered about her giving birth. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty extended sequence, but there's also the nightmare trippy sequence that she has where the head pops up and it looks around and it's all like, ah! <laughs> that was amazing. I was getting to that. <laughs> but I, I don't know how, how these age and things, but like literally we're told in the hospital, look, you know, she's pregnant. And then the nuns turn up, kill everybody and take her back to the camp. You know, and I mean, I say it really quickly. Like it only happens over a couple of shots. No, it's like 20 minutes. Yeah, right. It fucking ages. Because also we cut back to Tylo at his camp and he's kind of not wanting to shag any of the girls at the camp anymore. <laughs> he's he's going to get his pack to do a kind of spell to get, uh, I don't know, a hypnotic trance over a Russian ballet dancer named Olga, who appears to have defected from Russia. Remember Siberia at the beginning? You know, it's supposed to be incorporated with that. And, you know, he wants to breed with her to expand the pack. Well, it's also she's a different race of werewolf, and so he wants to merge the bloodlines together to yeah. create something new. Like, are you still a werewolf if you're a marsupial werewolf? Like, yeah, I'm just going to nod to say yeah. yeah. Like, if you were bitten by a were kangaroo, does that <laughs> make you a were kangaroo? I'm going <laughs> off here. I'm well, there's, there's a point in the film where uh, Beckmeyer gets bitten by a wolf. And and his and the other guy turns oh, around God. and goes, "Oh, you've been bitten!" And he's just like, "Oh no, it doesn't work like that. It's it's a merging of body chemicals." You may be one of them now. No way. It's got to take more than a bite. Exchange of bodily fluids. No, I'm okay. Oh yeah, oh, you're exchanging the fluids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was just like, "What? You got to fuck to become a werewolf?" I'm, like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure no. <laughs> But, hey, you know, we just got through Howling 2. Anything can happen, people. Anything can happen. Are they werewolves? Are they vampires? Are they something we don't know about? Because after the, after the carnage at the hospital has been uh, found out, which is fucking shit, it's just people lying on the floor. <laughs> right. No, there's, a, there's a one blood sp splat oh, yeah. by one of them. And you've got one doctor with his eyes open. That if you look really carefully, he's trying not to breathe right. in that sequence. And, and uh, you know, the president of wherever, has, you know, been in the background and obviously has been finding out this information about these uh, marsupial werewolves. And in conjunction with the Russian government and the Australian government, you know, they want to wipe them out. They want to kill them all. These things can't exist. They're a danger to public health and safety. And, and Dr. Beckmeyer plays the kind of, oh, no, I think they're all innocent in this. and we They're really an endangered to, species now. We need to study them and find out how they work because I don't even know how they work. And then you've got Dr. Uh, Professor Sharp who's like, no, I agree with them and we need to fucking exterminate them all. Exterminate them all. And so uh, Jaboa is obviously out of her camp and she decides that she's just going to give birth. And it's traumatizing. It's an extended sequence. It's uncomfortably long. And we see this tiny little thing emerging. Like, effects-wise, it's cool, I suppose. <laughs> like, I, I, I mean... But at the same time, yeah. I'm sat there the whole time while she's stroking the mound of hair above where this thing has climbed out and she's luring it. And I'm thinking, oh fuck, this thing's really alive. <laughs> like, we just, and she it climbs into her pouch and it's done. But Donnie is making his way there as well. Uh, and Beckmeyer and, and uh, Sharp are making their way to the camp too. And because we forget 
The ballet dancer. Sorry, the ballet dancer has mid changed. She's at the Sydney Opera House, and yeah. uh, she they're practicing for the evening show. Oh yeah, and, and because of all of the flashing lights, she starts to have a mid performance transformation. Yes, and uh, it's edited to the fact that she's spinning on the spot. Uh, and it's with the rapid cuts to the other the other dancers. Yeah. We don't get to see any transformation, just the stage is up until she's in full werewolf mode and this other other dancer just jumps right at her. Yeah, and she bites him. It's like they're using the nun face masks just right. for each cut. And the professors see this and capture the ballet dancer. And uh, you know, through questioning her they, they do like hypnotherapy to, to to find out what's going on. How did she become the way she is? Yeah. What's she doing? Where she's going? Yeah. And and they're attacked. How failure. Yes, by another by another werewolf. By by yeah, by Dimitri or whoever was with the ballet dancer in in the yeah. office. And it's so shit. It's so shit. The power goes out. They're like, oh my God, the power's out. And the werewolf's like, there. Right. And he, get, and he attacks and gets blasted. And I'm like, well, luckily he was carrying silver bullets. Maybe. But as we said, we're out in the outback uh, with Jaboa. And this is where we get introduced to the best character. Well, it's my favourite character yeah. in the whole film. It's uh, Kendi. Uh, who is played by Burnham Burnham. Oh, I fucking love this guy. Every like... time he appears, he just jumps out. <laughs> Looks like this place is really jumping. <laughs> like, good day, mate. <laughs> I don't, you got that weird arm sequence. There's like an arm and you're like, oh, is that a dead body or something? And no, it's just this guy who gets up and goes, what are you doing here? You Did know? you notice the name of the town? Flow. Do you know what that spells backwards? Wolf. <laughs> no. No, I did not. <laughs> what the fuck was with that red thing in the background as well? They saw this thing run and I'm like, is that a woman in red? Is that somebody on fire? <laughs> what is that? And they go, oh my God. That's it. That, that's it. You know, we've got Donnie uh, is sitting in a cave, you know, and he's he's looking at all these cave paintings of, of you know, wolf attacks or, or whatever from all of time. And Jaboa just enters the cave and she's like, hi, Donnie. And he's like, whoa, how did you find me? She's like, I felt you. I had to come with to you. And she opens up her pouch and shows him her, their baby thing. And I'm like... How long is this movie? And I kept pausing the movie just to see how long was there. And there was so much left. Yeah, they still had like another hour to go at oh this point. Oh my god, yes. There was still like a whole, like, you know, and the fucking army, the fucking army are just like, right, we found the town and we found the clan of wolves and the Russian ballet dancer has come to Tylo and they're in love because he's hypnotically entranced her with this spell, you know, and they're they're all asleep and the army are like, camped on the outskirts and i'm like these wolves are so shit they could smell another wolf across the city you know these are animals i know they're in human form at this point because they couldn't have everybody change but come on film you could have at least not allowed the army to get so fucking close <laughs> because everybody is captured or we we think they're killed but you know they all use tranquilizers because beckmeyer is like no let's capture as many as we can and uh johnny Jaboa and Donnie hear the attack by the army and they're just like, we need to get out of here. We need to, you know, head out into the outback. And so we start following them and they're spotted by some hunters yeah. who decide that they're going to go back and get some help and come and kill these two people for no reason other than they think they're crazy. But I've seen Wolf Creek, you know, I'm sure this shit happens all the time. <laughs> but we also end up cutting back to the hospital because now that they've got Oh, God, yeah. So now they've got Philo prisoner. Yeah. They've tied him up and they're just like, hey, you know, talk to us about you, you being a werewolf. <laughs> and he's uh, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's an amazing like, sequence. You know what? We're going to... I mean, the overacting by him and yeah. by the actress playing Olga. Yeah. Like, their batshit crazy eyes and the way they move their mouths and just hissing well, and... 
we need you to emote that you can't control this animal because yeah. we've got no effects to be able to show it. But he and starts laughing at like the cameras and he starts making faces because oh, he knows he's on TV. Yeah, well, he acts like a child, but yeah. then at the same time... But then they force the transformation by having the strobe lights play in his face. Oh my god. Was it he? Ab he's absorbing the power? Yes. That's what Beckmar actually says. <laughs> Sucking energy in! Ah! I'm like, what? How the fuck does that work? And then Beckmeyer is attacked by Tylo and they struggle on the floor. And I'm thinking, oh, fuck, this is where he gets bit. Yeah. You know, he becomes this thing. And Sharp pulls him off, tranquilizes Tylo. And that's when we're revealed that a bite doesn't do it. <laughs> okay, then. That changes everything. Yeah, oh, yeah fine. Jaboa and Donnie are out in the outback being hunted by the, uh, the pack. And Candy informs them, like, Jaboa. They've got an Aboriginal, you know, tracker. He's pretty good. They're going to find you. And she's like, oh, well, I don't know what we're going to do. And Candy says, look, I, the, I had a dream last night. This god spirit came to me. I can't remember what his name because it's just <laughs> Air Nike or whatever. Last night, a phantom came to me in my dream. It was Air Moonen. You know, it came to me last night. And she's like, oh, my God. And Donnie's like, I don't believe in spirits. And she... Jaboa looks at him like, <laughs> would you believe in werewolves? <laughs> I'm like, hopefully I can believe anything at the moment in this fucking movie. Just... So it turns out that all of the werewolves of all kind, or maybe just the marsupial kind, the marsupial. are direct descendants of an actual Tasmanian tiger. The one with the stripes on its back, the one that can dislocate its jaw. Yeah. Which... The one that was right at the title of the movie. Yeah, I didn't look into this. Like, is that a real animal? I didn't yeah. know. Like... Was it really wiped out? Did they did they manage to save it? I should probably wiki it, but I really just... I don't know if I could, because it would bring back traumatic memories. And so, when it was hunted and killed, this, this particular one, it, 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 it started the curse. And so, those that are affected by the curse can summon its spirit within them to become the ultimate killing machine when they need to be. Right. Yeah. Because Thilo ends up, obviously, after the incident he had, he ends up escaping. And he also calls the spirits. Well, well let, me, let me just stop you there, Gary. Because, I mean, let's, let's, let's deal with one situation at a time. I mean, Candy, Candy infuses himself with this spirit and attacks the hunting party. And it is so shit. <laughs> it is so terrible. I mean, the director basically took the ideas that he had with Howling 2 and the attack in the warehouse and just went, yeah, this is what we're going to do. First person POV shots, quick edits that you yeah. can't see any blood, try to not linger on the actor in the makeup too much. And guys, when you're dying, do the best to die as best you can. And it is fucking terrible. <laughs> One take and done. And done. And he gets <laughs> and he gets blasted, doesn't he? He gets, he yeah. gets fucking shot. And and we we'd already seen that after Beckmeyer had found out that the, all the wolves are gonna be just wiped out. And so he helps Tylo and Olga escape from the from from the facility and they're driving. And I fucking, I, I couldn't fucking believe this. I mean, I, I don't know why I just didn't turn the film off multiple times at this point. They're driving and they drive into a quarry. And they literally just do a circle in the middle of the quarry <laughs> and make a load of dust. And, and Beckmeyer's car kind of drives off camera and the police officers stop in the dust. And we see the silhouette of a wolf in the dust. And then it cuts to something completely different. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not even, I don't even know what. So I blacked it out. But when it cuts back to the cops, the cops are like, what was that? <laughs> it must have been a giant dog. I'm like, well, obviously it wasn't him standing on two legs, like 20 feet away. You know, could have been the woman on fire again. I don't know. And they're like, look at this footprint. Oh, I don't like that, mate. Why? Oh, it's one of those flying wallaby thing, giant six footers. I'm like, <laughs> oh, film, please just. There's something there. 
it's one of those large wombats. One with the big wings. Boom! So when when they come across the body of Candy, you know, Beckmeyer, Tylo, Olga, uh, uh, and, and Johnny are all together with the baby, and Candy's just like, ah, oh, man, I did what I could, you know, to help you. And I'm thinking, did they have silver bullets? I don't know at this point, I don't care. And Jaboa looks at Candy and she's like, don't worry, Candy, you're going to be a river, a mountain. Join yeah. the rainbow. And he's like, nah, I'm just gonna die. You'll turn into a river, Candy, and then a rainbow, and then you'll be a mountain. No way, I'm just gonna die. <laughs> and it, that was brilliant I mean it's the, it's awesome and it's awful like there's just no delivery he just says the line I'm dead <laughs> just then dies immediately that was perfect now right Candy's dead now or it's rejuvenating or whatever the fuck this guy they've done to this guy and the scientists have organized Omega Team to destroy the werewolves. But don't, don't don't they burn his body as a part of the funeral? I'm getting to that. Yeah. Omega team. Two guys. That's it. That's all you need for Omega team. These two guys wearing sunglasses. They're hunting down the marsupials. And how do they find them? Well, they're burning the body. <laughs> and there's a giant pillar of smoke. And I'm like, bushfires? Like, that's really dangerous in Australia, I hear, but hey-ho, you know. You... When you got to burn a werewolf, you got to burn a werewolf. Now, they burn his body, and Omega Team comes across the body, and it's got a misshapen skull. Yes. So when he burned... He transformed. He transformed? Yeah. Or underneath, they look like that? <laughs> you, you, you know. No. Yeah. The skeleton comes alive, people! It comes alive and attacks so he wasn't him! was dead, or was he but, undead? Or I was... don't know, but they blast the fuck out of it with bullets. <laughs> and you're like, well, okay, that's, that's, that's it. And Tylo really doesn't like Donnie. For some reason. <laughs> like, and you just get this stare off where Donnie stands up to Tylo and he's like, stop staring at me! And Tylo gets up and he just kind of stares intimidatingly. At, at Donnie and Olga's just like Tylo no and slaps him and Tylo gets a little bit upset and just, walks off just fucks off and Beckmeyer is trying to convince him to stay like hey man you know we should work together we're being chased we're being attacked Tylo's like fuck this shit and walks off and he in brings in the spirit. the spirit of the great wolf the great wolf and you're like okay everybody can do this I suppose yeah and then what could possibly be either the greatest sequence in movie history or possibly the worst, I'm not sure, pick one. You have the camp sequence with Omega Team. <laughs> They're both in this tent. No, got, no, no, I'm sorry. One of, them, one of them's outside, one of them's in the tent and he's got an array of weapons with him all laid out. Like, he's. it looks like he's having a fever. Yeah. Like, and I wasn't too sure if after being bitten by candy, like, there was an effect. But the film has told us it doesn't work by biting. I'm not sure how that works. But the guy outside is just like, hey, are you okay in there? And the guy inside the tent's like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, how are you? Hey, you all right? How are you? Hey, man. And you're like, no, he's fucking dead. <laughs> right. The guy's dead. And you hear a bit of growl, maybe a little bit of rustle, and the guy in the tent pulls up a machine gun, and he's like, this isn't going to do it. And then he pulls out a bazooka. And I was like, yeah, I said, in Howling 1, a rocket launcher. Grenade launcher, bazooka, yeah. And yeah, we see this giant snout emerge into the tent, and I was like, the size of this thing. Also, look how awful this effect is. <laughs> and yeah, we, he pulls the trigger, and we cut miles away to watch this sparkling explosion. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm guessing he did. Bye bye, Omega Team. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye, Thilo. Bye bye, Thilo. And then we cut back to Olga, Beckmeyer, Donny, Jaboa, um, kind of just sat in the outback. And I, I will try to explain this as best I can, but I could not fucking believe what the fuck happened over the next 10, 15 minutes of the last of this movie. Because they start to kind of settle down and it's like, 
you, you're just watching Beckmeyer and Olga getting together and he's like, I love you. And she's like, I love you too. And he's like, what about Tylo? And I'm like, Tylo's fucking dead. And she's like, Tylo's dead. And I'm like, the thing is like, he, she, she, knows. she had Olga and Tylo had this, this relationship. Like it was destiny that they were meant to be together. It was a magic the, spell. It was the, a magic the, spell. Okay. It was a magic spell. Yeah. And the, like the moment he's dead, she's just like immediately falls into the arms of Breckmeyer. Yeah. Just like I've always like, loved you. <laughs> Is he, is he, like, I thought the movie was trying to tell me that the bite was, you know, kind affecting of him, affecting him, making him, no. him think for these people, but they're hiding in the outback and we, and the baby grows, uh, uh, Johnny's baby grows and I'm like, okay, but it stopped looking like a puppet now and now it looks like a human child. Yeah, but it, but the film's shitty editing. I'm like, oh, it's like a rapid aging thing. I didn't know they aged quick when they were kids. That, that's kind of cool. That makes sense that she didn't go nine months before. Yeah. You know, I don't know how marsupials work. And then the little fetus comes out and then she grow. Maybe she grows it for nine months. Because now it's a baby. That must be nine months they've been in the outback. If we're going by that. And then when it gets to at least, I don't know, the baby, the child must be at least... Five? I'm going to guess child age. I've been around a few, you know, I'm guessing age. Olga and Beckmeyer have had one who that looks at least two. And I'm like, well, Olga's a werewolf, so maybe her shit works the same way as Jaboa's marsupial shit. I, I'm not entirely sure. Stay with me. And Donnie says to Beckmeyer, hey man, we're going to go back to the city. We don't want to live out here anymore in the outback for what appears to be 10 minutes but could be fucking longer um we're gonna go back and begmar's like no man you can't go back you could be still hunted what if they find jaboa what if they try to uh you know do something to the baby well we're just gonna have to run their risk and they leave and they leave and begmar and olga just kind of stay there and the film the camera lingers on them and i'm like is it the end now is that the end yeah like we like where the main character oh, they're the main characters who were or, or Beckmar is the main character and the Professor Sharp turns up at their home because they've got this daughter the daughter now is grown up teens, yeah is grown up and he's teaching her English and Sharp turns up at the at the their house and he's like yes yeah, so I heard information that there was a Russian ballet dancer here so I assumed it was the werewolf woman where's where's Jaboa and Donnie they left Fifteen years ago! <laughs> I was going to ask you about them. But they left here about fifteen years ago. We haven't heard or seen of them since. Well, nice time jump there. He also explains though that yeah, but werewolves are cool now. Like we, we don't hunt them. The president pardoned them. The president the, the, still realized, the same president fifteen years later. Yeah, the same president, the the, uh, the same guy, he was just like, No, no, we're we're gonna pardon them, we're gonna let everybody go. So you can come back to the city and all have normal jobs. And so we then cut to Jaboa and Donnie kind of working on their next movie. Right. Fifteen years, remember people, it's been Fucking 15 years. Well, that since explains the fake mustache that he has now. Yeah, since they walked out and to this point, that's 15 years. And they've been working on movies quite successfully because they... it seems like Jabot is about to win an award from Dame Edna. Oh, God. <laughs> but but Beckmeyer is told to watch the awards by Jabot and Donnie's child, who's now a fully grown man. And we find out from Beckmeyer in this sequence at the university. That it's been a further eight years since he left Professor Sharp. He walked <laughs> Professor Sharp. He told Professor Sharp it'd been 15 years. And now it's been eight years. That's 23 years this movie has time jumped. In the space of... Minutes. Minutes. That was eight years ago when Sharp found us. Since then, I've been teaching here and lecturing on my experience all over the world. Yeah. Like, Doom didn't even do that. <laughs> Doom! Fucking David Lynch's Doom! I know the ending of Doom, it feels like it's three hours, but that's because it's supposed to space, like, years! They fitted 23 years in fucking minutes! And, yeah, Jaboa is going to win this one award for science effects? Yeah, something crap. <laughs> From Dame Edna. And I've realised now, if a movie has... Dame Edna in. I like. I, I know he's really funny. I grew up watching him. I don't know what the whole issue now is with people dressing up with women's clothes when you've got Dame Edna 
there in person, but anything with Dame Edna in, I just don't think I'll ever watch. If Adam Sandler makes a movie with Dame Edna, dude, seriously, he'll blow the world up. And she gives Jaboa this award and says, congratulations, and Jaboa is giving her a speech out. And Beckmar and Olga are watching, and the flashing lights from the paparazzi start to go off. Here we go again, it's a callback to the original movie. We're gonna have a transformation live on television. <sighs> and she changes, doesn't she? She changes and everyone panics and everyone goes running. And, and Olga starts to change. Yeah. And the three nuns in the cave, they start to freak out as well and laugh. And then you got Professor Sharp who just laughs. And the movie cuts away. The end. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, Liam, did you have any favourite or memorable scenes? I did, Holy actually. God. I really did. Things I was like, what the fuck? The line at the beginning from the, the two agents, I have a strange feeling. Is it indigestion? No. Fear. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. That could work in any other movie. Except this. Jaboa on the bus with the priest. What are you running from, child? My stepfather tried to rape me and he's a werewolf. <laughs> you just... That should have been the movie's tagline. They should have gone with that. It came from Uranus, the movie. I don't know why, but I'd rather watch that than this movie. Uh, maybe. <laughs> you know, it's just, it looked shit. And, and possibly the whole the whole bed sequence, like I, like I said, I, I, how much do you have to sweat in a sex sequence? That was incredible. The nightmare sequence, oh my God, like you said, when that thing pops out, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, okay, movie, I believe you, you're wanting to scare me. Like, you haven't up to this point, but <laughs> that's some trippy shit. Throwing the doctor out the window. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I, can't, I was expecting the dummy to flail around, but I was like, it's not too bad an effect, actually. It's just the scream that goes over the top of it. Over the top. It was, I, like... The shit attack up to that point, but then you just watch yeah. the body fall, and you're like, "Whoa!" They just they just got to the top of the real hospital, and just like, Whoo. Tylo being questioned by the professors. His, the, the guy's acting is just so over the top and so crazy that I can understand, you know, from a positive point of view, he was trying to emote because he had nothing, you know, and he's an actor and he wants to get paid, so I'm going to do the best I can with what I've got, and they 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 do. I suppose the whole energy sucking sequence, everything explodes and then he just escapes and oh my God, it's, it's shit. <laughs> and then finally, Omega team. <laughs> I mean, they are so bad. They are just two guys with machine guns, but that rocket launcher sequence, yeah. <laughs> I got a few memorable sequences. No, no real favorites. I have a favorite character, and, yes, and that was yes. Kendi. Yeah. And so I have to say, Kendi's death when he just says, "No way, I'm just gonna die." Yeah. And just lays down and dies. Like, give him the award. Yes. Give him the award. Give him the award. He was brilliant. Um, I, 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 I was like right away at the start when we saw the wolf tied to the tree. I'm like, it looks kind of like the wolf from the first film, except it has human legs. Yeah. Was it meant to be cropped so we don't see the human legs or? Or was it mid change that they caught her, you know? It's just like, oh, it's just it, like, I, I, from that, from the opening moment, I was like, yeah. this is, we're going into bad territory here you lost me when like you said that tasmanian devil did the terrible roar as yeah. soon as that got me i was like fuck this movie <laughs> um of course it came from uranus like <laughs> what a moment what a what a film title uh the ballerina wolf transformation jeez the the <laughs> werewolf nuns the, the the big wolf in the tent explosion just like yeah those those are the moments and the ones you definitely also mentioned <laughs> Well, Ian, do you recommend Howling 3, The Marsupials? No. 
I just, I just don't. This, this movie is an hour um, and 38 minutes long, and that's an hour and 37 minutes too long. I have, I will never get that time back. But then again, the memories, you know, Jaboa, the bus, Tylo, I'll remember you, but I really have a bad feeling how this series is going to go. For sure. <laughs> this is the most bizarre uh, werewolf movie, without a doubt, that I have ever seen. And, and 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 when I say werewolf, I guess this is more well, Tasmanian tiger than wolf. <laughs> but it, it doesn't matter. This film is a mess. The acting involved is incredibly bad. The dialogue so corny and camp. The characters so weird, yet strangely memorable. <laughs> The film's effects are so laughably bad and no real good transformations, no real gore to speak of. It's very unrealistic looking, like, where things. The story is where things also really fall apart. I felt that, like, there was four stories going on yeah. and they weren't well paced or edited and certain parts were incredibly boring. Yeah. But it wouldn't really be long, I guess, before another what-the-fuck moment <laughs> <it> happens. <laughs> You know, it, 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 the film will leave you wondering what will happen next. Yeah. And and the thing is, you can't take this film seriously. The film clearly isn't. It's striving to be a comedy, and in places I admit to laughing at the awfulness. Yeah. Does that count? Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of recommend Howling 3, despite it being a terrible, terrible <laughs> sequel... <laughs> Watch this for just how insane the ideas are. The werewolf nun. The trippy dreams. The comical effects. The werewolf birthing scene. An army dude exploding in the tent. And candy. And candy. <laughs> yes, this film is bad. It's fucking awful. It's boring. And yet, it's such a bizarre experience. It just has to be seen to be believed. Just when you thought it was safe to go down under. <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews.